Hey, you're back with Stephen Damon, the Penny Stupid Podcast. We're talking about side hustles again today. And specifically, I think we're going to be talking about uh, rideshare gig driving apps. Is that right, Damon? Yeah, we're going to talk about stuff that a lot of drivers are going to be mad at us for. <laughs> yeah. You might not want to watch this video. That's They're going to be mad. <laughs> to start. If, if, you know, people people are going to be mad about what we're talking about. But uh, I think you said it best earlier when you said, you know, people just need to hear the truth. Yeah, because there's plenty of people out there that uh, will appreciate it. But there's also plenty of drivers out there that are, you know, for va- lack of a better word, like to be victims or maybe they don't like to be victims they just that's their natural state and they complain and this doesn't work and this company doesn't pay me enough money and on and on and on but the reality is you kind of control it all yourself so if you're not happy with what's going on and what you're getting paid it's kind of your fault kind of <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's well, what I'm trying to trying I to think... put it easy it's 100% yeah. your fault i i, I think I think the problem that I observe is that uh, any of these gig driving apps, the the people driving or the food delivery or whatever it is, I have observed in the last couple of years that it seems that people are are making less and less yeah. for each gig offer. And you know, I you see these offers for like you know eight bucks for nineteen miles and all this other stuff, and it's it horrible. seems like. Shitty one, shitty one, shitty one, one after another, and it just keeps affecting your acceptance rates or you know whatever it is. And uh, the companies, I, I hate to say that they don't care; they do care about their bottom line. Uh, the The drivers are disposable. You know, yeah, you can't 100%. make a career out of out of being a driver. You're not going to get like employee of the month awards or anything, uh, and you just got to accept the fact that you can do the best you can with the opportunity you've got in front of you right now, but that's it. Yeah. I mean, if you've been a driver for a while and you think back, oh man, it's not as good now as it was last year. And then you go, oh, it wasn't as good last year as it was the year before. And it wasn't as good two years ago as it was three years ago. Eventually you start to like, what's the trend here? Like it's getting worse and worse and worse. And and essentially, all that's happening is these companies are getting to a point where they need to start making a profit, or they, maybe they've been making a profit yeah. for a year or two. But, you know, what a lot of these drivers don't think about is, you know, you weren't there in the beginning. You weren't the one out there selling your ass off, trying to get venture capital money, coming up with this idea for an Uber or a Lyft or a DoorDash, creating something that literally didn't even exist before, taking on all that risk, and, you know, through sheer will and salesmanship, creating something <laughs> out of nothing. To provide right. you an opportunity, but you can just sit there and bitch about it. It's not paying me enough. It's not paying me enough. But the, the key thing is it's an opportunity. And at the end of the day, it's just supply and demand. And driving a burrito a few blocks is not a high skilled profession. It's just right. not right. Anybody can do that. Right. I mean, you got a driver's license, you got a car. There's a lot of stuff making the rounds right now. I don't know if it's true, not true. I'm saying out of that, but people are complaining on Spark right now, Steve, right? About, oh, these people are coming across the border, these illegals, they're they're cheating, they're stealing these orders, they're doing this, they don't speak English, yada 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 yada. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I'm not gonna weigh in on that. Yeah. But if it is I can tell you but if it is I can tell you a hundred percent. It is not true. It's it's people wanting to blame somebody, something else. But my point for is for their own lack. Even if it was true, essentially what you're saying is somebody from another country that doesn't understand mm-hmm. anything about what we do or the way of life or or anything could come over with no skills, no experience in this food delivery, and right. get a fake driver's license or whatever they claim they do, and do the job and take the job from you. If that's right. how low the barrier to entry is, <laughs> you can come from another country, not even speak the language and take the job. That's not a profession that you can build a career on. So it's just going to continue to go down and down and down because if yeah. you're Uber or you're DoorDash or whatever, why would you offer a driver $10 for a route that somebody else will gladly do for five? Oh, yeah. It, and, it's and, just the way it uh, works. You know, as you said, if somebody doesn't accept that ride, they might throw another dollar on that. Or, yeah. You know, a dollar fifty and wait until somebody goes, all right, I'll do it. It's just supply and demand. So if you're not making enough money, 
you're not getting in your area any offers at all that meet your criteria. Everybody has different criteria. What I'm willing to drive for is different than what you're willing to drive for and somebody else is willing to yep. drive for. And if you live in an area that none of these apps provide an opportunity that's what you're willing to drive for, then you're just not in the right thing. You need to get out of it. Rideshare is not for you. Food delivery is not for you because it's not going to go and bounce back up where all of a sudden you're going to start making money like the good old days where you're getting $20, $30 for burritos, uh, you know, taking them two miles or whatever. But I, there's still opportunity there. The opportunity is not dead. You just have to yeah. be smarter about the Selective. options that you're taking. And if you take a $4 yeah. order and you go 10 miles and then you turn around and bitch about how that didn't pay you enough money, that's mm -hmm. 100% your fault. You know, yeah. Lyft, <laughs> Uber, they're making offers. DoorDash, they're making an offer. If no driver in that area will take that offer, you know what DoorDash does? They have to add mm -hmm. another dollar. And nobody takes yeah. that. They add another 50 cents. They add another dollar. Yeah. Eventually, the order will get to where somebody will take it. So if you're out there taking $3 orders and $4 orders, not only are you kind of screwing yourself, you're screwing all the other drivers in the area too. So it's not the company that's the problem. You're the problem if you're taking those orders. Don't take those orders. Wait for a better order or go do something else if there are no good orders. Well, the way the system is set up, it's based on a minimum base pay plus the tip that you get on top of that. And yeah. that's where your gravy is. And uh, as you and I have spoken about, I think that people are becoming more numb to tipping because you're just getting hit with tips everywhere you go. And it's just getting easier and easier to say, you know, no mas. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just can't do it anymore. I, I, I told you the story about how I was uh, at some, oh, it's taco place. And, uh, the the cashier was taking my order and she, you know, spin, spins the thing around and says, you know, a couple questions for you to answer. And I <laughs> just, just a few know, questions. looked at her. Yeah. I just looked at her and I'm, I'm just sick of it at this point <laughs> and just like zero. Well, you, you know, know, I'm not trying to be mean or vindictive, but come on, I'm going to have to get my own food. I'm going to have to clean my own table and put my stuff away. And, you know, this isn't a full service restaurant. I, I just, I can't do it anymore. No, I mean, everything is getting out of control. And, you know, going back to like, like with food delivery, you know, if you're out there and you're making $20 an hour, I just went to Subway on the way home. Just after we talked, came mm -hmm. and we had some people over at the house. We had to get some Subway. I got four sandwiches, no drinks, yeah. no cookies, no nothing. Four sandwiches. And, you know, I paid. And of course I had the thing, do you want to do a tip? No. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I mean, the guy made the sandwiches fine, but he didn't like drive him to my house. You know, I'm right. I'm standing there waiting for him. I could have made him faster, in my opinion. But $79. For four sandwiches? Four Subway sandwiches. And most of them are just plain. Of course, my son, he gets like chicken, bacon, salon, like whatever meat yeah. you have, put the meat on there, hold all the other crap, right? But no $79. Foot longs, huh? Oh, the $5 footlongs are like $9 now. I mean, Gosh. no, no, they don't have $9 footlongs. The the five dollar footlongs are now nine dollars six inch turkey and cheese. That's that's what they have. The footlongs are like thirteen oh. fourteen dollars now. But literally that's eighty dollars for four sandwiches, right? So mm -hmm. now, you know, when I go out and drive, I do it part time. I make forty to sixty bucks an hour. Yeah, those mm -hmm. you, maybe you guys haven't found my channel before. You listen to this for the first time. Yeah, I go out and make forty sixty bucks an hour, and I do it consistently. If you follow our channel and watch my videos, I'm yeah. a little bit behind on my my income updates, but I'll catch up. I make 40 to 60 bucks an hour week in and week out by cherry picking the hell out of it and doing a whole bunch of apps. So I don't sit there and bitch about Uber's only giving me $4 rides and just sit there and keep waiting for the next $4 ride. I go do other things. But even at that, at 40 bucks an hour, I'm sitting there going, I would have to drive for two hours to get Subway sandwiches for the kids. And yeah. Me. No. And my wife didn't even get a sandwich. It was just the three kids and me. <laughs> it's 80 bucks. I'd have to, and if Wait. you're out there making $20 an hour because you're just bitching about Uber's not giving you enough you know, high-dollar rides, you have to work for four hours to go buy your family some sandwich. It's broken. Well, the whole system is broken. Like Everything has just gotten crazy. So you got to well, get smarter on your income. I don't, I don't want to uh, pay an, a surcharge to order through an app to get my hamburger or whatever it is and then have to tip to try to bribe or induce a driver to bring it to me directly. Uh, I've gotten to the point now where 
fuck it, man. I'm just going to put my ass in the car and I'm going to go get it myself. Well, imagine if I door dashed that subway order. It, yeah. it was 80 bucks for me to go get it. The, yeah. if I, and, 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 and I, I make good money. I don't ever door dash. I don't ever Uber right. Eats because to me, it's a waste of money. It's way too, stuff's expensive enough. So if right. I'm feeling like this, there's got to be people that make, you know, 50,000 a year, 60 grand a year, 80 grand a year, feeling the same thing, the pinch of how expensive stuff is. So if you're and the point is, if you're in this as a profession, not only are the companies going to be squeezing you, but the tips are, there's going to be a breaking point on the tips too, right? When I went and did an Instacart the other day, it was $70 yeah. for, I think it was a 20, 20, what was it, Steve? 20 item, 20 items at Target. Something like that. No, 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 yeah. no. It was 40 items, 40 items. I don't, I think it was 40 items. Yeah. And it was like eight, uh, 75 bucks. The tip was $68. That lady gave me a $68 tip. And that's the only reason I left my office and went and got it because it was $75 to go to Target, which is three miles away, grab the 40 items and deliver it, right? But with that, mm -hmm. without the tip, effing uh, Instacart was paying $8 and change. There's, I, I wouldn't even have like used the energy for my finger to like swipe it for $8 yeah. and change. It still took me two hours. I'm not a fast shopper and it was in Target. It took me a little over two hours to do it. Now, was it worth it? Well, yeah, because it was $75. But Instacart was saying, hey, will you do this for eight? Yeah, no, thank it you. It was only that tip you know, that did it. One of my, uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, driver food delivery gig apps uh, channels that I love to watch on YouTube is Meaty Mama. Meaty Mama. You know, I've talked, talked about her before, but I, <laughs> the video last night, she she – Delivered an order, and on her phone, she goes, oh, hey, the customer added an additional tip, 99 cents. <laughs> she, she was saying, I bet that customer said, that driver did an awesome job. She went above and beyond. Here's 99 cents. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, like drivers, if you're out there, and I know because I, I get it. Th this is what you got to realize. Driving is going to be constantly changing, right? What you did on a certain app six months ago is probably not what you can do on that same app today. You got to constantly right. be looking at different apps, looking at different strategies, looking at different areas. It's not going to stay the same. Perfect example. I started driving a Walmart spark as a, as an experiment. Um, what was that Steve? Maybe six months ago. Oh, you and, were crushing it. Yeah. Well, once, well, cause I used to just mainly do a lot of lift. Um, it's been so long. I can't, what was it called? Lux. Oh, lift you Lux. were doing uh yeah, yeah and you were do, doing more and more Amazon too. Yeah, I was doing like Lift Lux, and then all of a sudden they just said, taking Lift Lux away. No more Lift Lux. Yeah. I looked at what Lift had become at that point and went, I can't make the kind of money I need to make driving Lift. That's a waste of my time unless it's going to be a Lift Black ride. But those right. are only few and far between. I can't make full time, you know, full time money part time, as I like to call it, doing just Black only. So then I had to start branching out. And my, so then I found Walmart Spark. And for a few months, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I can cherry pick these rides. A lot of them are 30, 40, $50 routes yeah. that are just take me like 30 to 45 minutes and I bang 50 bucks. I'm three miles, two miles from the Walmart at my house. I sit in my office working with my app on. They throw me some $20 order. Screw I'll that. Right there. Uh, no, 20 bucks? Uh, -uh. I'm not doing no 20 bucks. <laughs> but this is the mindset, right? A lot of people, 20 bucks, they'd be all about that. No, 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 no. My opportunity costs are different. So you throw me a $40 order, okay, I'll go grab it real quick. A $50 order, fine. But about two months ago, it all stopped. I stopped getting orders. What's going on? Well, there's a whole bunch of new drivers that came up here. And again, whether they're legal, not legal, whatever, it's not, not, my, not my area. But what I know for sure is there's a lot more drivers now, and they camp out in the parking lot. And Walmart is, or, uh, is, is giving those people that are in the parking lot the priority orders, not me anymore. Well... So, and Instacart does the same thing. Too. Yeah. So I can no longer sit in my house and just get those great orders. Every once in a while, I'll get it. But it was a dramatic change, and it was an overnight change. It was like, this week you're going to make, eight, you made $800 at Walmart. Next week you made $100 at Walmart. And I didn't do anything well, different. You know, but it changes. Before, but before this, you know, it wasn't a year ago you could sign up with Instacart and be approved immediately and start doing it. Like when you did signed up with Walmart Spark. And then, you know, six months later, all of a sudden there's a waiting list. Yeah, there's a waiting list on you, most of these apps now. Right. Now you now they have so many drivers, they don't need you. And yeah. so they got you on a waiting list. And then once you do get uh, to be able to do it, now you're on 
the bottom of the ladder. You yeah. have, you know, none of this diamond, platinum preferred. You're going to get better offers, anything else. So, you know, people end up sitting near the grocery store or the Walmart or whatever to try to get as many orders as possible. And they're crappy orders. Yeah, there, there are. And that's why you, you can't you can't do this stuff full time. I mean, you can, but the, the, the longer you do it, the more hours per week you put into these apps, the more you're going to tend to take orders that are not good orders because you're just sitting right. there, right? Like I do it, like I said, I make 40 to 60 bucks a week, but I do it very part time. You know, I might have a week where I hour, only do an hour. 10 hours for the whole week. That's it. You mean 40 to 60 an hour? What'd I say? A week. 40 to 60 a week. I, I would shut the channel off. <laughs> <laughs> 40 to $60 an hour, but that's because I have other things going on and I'm cherry picking. If I try to do this mm-hmm. stuff full time, there's so many other drivers that there's just not enough good orders to be able to make anywhere near 40 to $60 an hour every hour for 40 hours a week. So you could try to turn these things into full time, but that's not what they're designed for. And you can complain, right. you can get mad at the companies. And I, I'm not like, you know, defending the company saying they don't steal tips or whatever it is they do. I don't care. Again, it's, it's, it's not in my purview, but it doesn't matter. They're just providing opportunities. You can decide, do I want to take this opportunity or not? My acceptance rate on Uber is like 4%. Like I never even do Uber rides anymore. Because there are no Uber rides that ever make sense for me as far as a dollar to mile or dollar to minute ratio. They just don't pay enough. Now, I'll do Lyft Black. Correction, I will do Uber. I'll do Uber if I'm going somewhere. Once in a while, if I'm, oh, I got to go 30 miles in my son's game or something like that. Just once in a while, I'll flip on Uber just to see if there's a ride going that way. And I'm like, okay, it's I'm going 30 miles. I'm taking this guy and it's only going to pay $18, but I'm going there anyway. So that's what I use Uber for, but I don't sit there all day and work Uber. And there's guys that do it and that's fine. And they go, they make $200 a day, $250 a day, but they're driving 12, 16 hours a day. And they're doing, you know, 30, five, six, $7 trips and hoping for tips. That's, that's not me. That's not what I want to do. You can make these apps into whatever you want, but they're just opportunities. Use them for what they are and, and just outsmart the other drivers. All you have to do, just take the better yeah. orders Leave the $5 orders to people that are going to take them. But if you take $5 orders, you're topping yourself out at 15, 20 bucks an hour max. That's all you're going to make. And if that's fine, well, here's a, take those. If not, don't ever take an, them. Here's another thing that frosts my Wheaties is uh, frosts my Wheaties. <laughs> drivers that want to organize and unionize in order to force the companies to do something different. Uh, and why? Uh, what, are you, what are you going to accomplish? You look at these. Oh, I know what you're uh, going to accomplish. You're going to make it nothing. Pay less for everybody. If <laughs> if you succeed, then everybody makes less. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, look what happened in New York with the the minimum. They've lowered that now, right? It was of course they have. It started out twenty nine dollars per active hour, and I think it's now down to seventeen ish. And and not only that, like now that. now people that used to be the the drivers that used to just kind of cherry pick and take the orders they wanted mm-hmm. to. Now they're required to take crappier orders because the, the, the requirements are a lot more stringent because they're paying you a yeah. minimum amount. So now it's almost like you're on the clock, even though you're still an independent contractor. They're treating you like you're not because they're being forced to pay you a certain amount of money. And if they're being forced to pay you a certain amount of money, then there's things that they can essentially force you to do. So now you lose all the benefits of being an independent contractor for the most part. And now you're taking longer well, rides for lower pay, putting a lot more miles on your car, and it's a lot harder to be a dasher in those areas because they're limiting the number of people that could be online at any given time right. because now they can force you to take these bad orders. So they don't need as many drivers. Well, and if I was a customer and I could no tip and still get my order like next one up, yeah, why would I tip? Yeah. So, so the tips are going away. Or you, or you get your minimum pay yeah. plus tip. Well, the tips are going to go away because what did DoorDash yeah, do? The, they added another yeah, fee put it on, on the top. back end. Well, they added it on yeah. the front end. So the tip goes on the no, back end. No, the tips. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But DoorDash replaced the front end tip with a front end fee. So DoorDash is like, mm-hmm. fine. You want to make us pay uh, uh, you a minimum amount per, you know, per hour? Fine. We'll put your income on the back end after the customer has their food. And we'll take extra yeah. money from them on the front end that pisses them off a little bit more and makes it much less likely they're going to give you anything on the back end. Congratulations, New York. You did a great job. Way to get that legislation passed. Awesome. Now, there are some side hustle opportunities out there for people to explore 
but none of them are without risks and potential consequences. And if you're looking to make easy, uh, high paying side hustle money, I, I, it doesn't really exist. Can you yeah. think of anything, Damon? I mean, you, besides well, being a everything, hooker, everything but, takes work. I mean, there's yeah. still there's still good money to be made. Again, follow our channel. I still make forty to sixty bucks an hour, and I'm only working ten twenty hours a week. That's how I recommend using these apps. Get as many of them as you can. Find the ones that you like. Find what works in your area, and then figure out how you can cherry pick them to 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 meet your goals. I could look at uh, an order and know if it's going to meet my criteria or not, and I decline mm -hmm. almost everything. Decline, 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 decline. All of a sudden, a banger comes out. Boom! I'll shoot out. I'll go do that one. Right. And then I have other tips and tricks. If I'm doing like a big $40, $50 Instacart or something like that, or a Walmart, or I'll, I'll flip on DoorDash or an Uber Eats and see if I can get a burrito run on the way to deliver the groceries. So right. I, they call it right. dirty stacking or whatever. I call it making more money like a boss, but whatever right. you want to call it, you can, you know, you, you don't work for them. You work for yourself. That's why the more and more you make these apps pay you a guaranteed amount of money per hour, and the more and more you have to kind of be their employee the less freedom you're going to have to actually create an income. DoorDash yeah. is never going to pay me 40 bucks an hour. None of these companies are going to ever pay me 40 bucks an hour, but I can go out and make 40 bucks an hour by having the freedom to select the opportunities, the rides and the food delivery um, orders that I want to take. So if you're not making the kind of money you want to make, make different choices. Yeah. Well, when you look at side hustles, you know, I'm doing Amazon and, uh, that's completely different. I also have another thing that I I do where the funny thing about it is I actually find the people to do the work on Fiverr and then I just mark up the work and sell it on to my customer. And I, I'm I'm finding contractors to do the work for less than it would cost me to do the work and it saves me time. There are all but sorts of things you're you providing an opportunity what? for that contractor. That's how it works. Absolutely. That contractor is willing to do that work for that amount of money. That's all DoorDash and Uber are doing. They're providing an opportunity yeah. and this driver's willing to do that route for $5 and you're not. That's a problem right. for you, not for Uber. Sorry. It's right. just the way it is. So, you know, if you just are focusing on driving apps, there's really nothing else coming along right now that's going to knock your socks off. I mean, there are things like maybe deliver that, um, but that's not you know widespread and universal. But yeah, the, the app not that uh, I think about, yeah, they're not enough orders. The app that I was thinking about was what was that rideshare app where the driver gets all the money? Oh, that's um, rides. Yeah, Spell, but spelled, there's no, it's, there's it's, no, it's it's rides spelled stupid. Is what it is. It's W R I D Z. That way, no customer can ever find it or know what it is. That's why they did that. I that, guess that is stupid. Yeah, you get all the money, a hundred percent of nothing is probably what you're going to get at this point, right? Because I got no customers on the platform. I, I was a driver, and I heard about it on. Uh, this was like six months ago. I heard about it on YouTube. I couldn't yeah. find it on Google because I didn't freaking know it was spelled W R I D Z. I'm like R I D E S R I D Z. I couldn't even find it, and I knew what I was kind of looking for. How's a regular Joe going to find it? Oh, I, I want I don't want to take a taxi. I really don't like Uber. I don't like Lyft. I wonder if there's another one that's spelled really weird. I wonder what that is. Like, they're never going to find it. Well, so we're not saying that there's no side hustles out there that you can do to make extra money, but you just can't follow the crowd and expect to make a, you know a ton of money and have a non-exclusive opportunity to work little and make a lot. Now, there, the world is full of side hustles that you can do. Yeah. Uh, there, you just have to be an entrepreneur at heart. And I think the biggest thing is don't overcommit when you get started in something. Start small, start inexpensive, just dip your toe in, whether it's I'm going to provide some sort of consulting or contracting or writing or engineering or whatever it is type of service. And then find somebody else to do the work for you. Mark it up. Yeah, and if you're right, if you're doing you know these writing gigs, driving gigs, stop. Don't ever take two dollar, three dollar, four dollar, five. Don't take no. these little orders. You're you're never going to make any money. You're just burning your time, burning your gas, and all you're doing is teaching the algorithms that there's drivers yeah, out there willing to do these jobs for three bucks. So you're hurting yourself. Right. You're hurting the other drivers. Just say no. Just just don't do it. 
Like I won't take a ride or an order and it, unless it's a minimum 10 bucks, unless it's a yeah. rare circumstance, I'm, I'm stacking something. But if I'm just like, I'm going to take an order. If it's eight bucks, I don't care if it's only going five miles. I'm not going to do it. That's, that's just me. Now, a lot of you might take that, but I'm not going to take it. It's eight effing dollars. I don't care about $8. I'm not going to go do that. It's wasting my time. And then what it's going to do is take me off the board. Steve, how many times have I done that learning this stuff where I go take a ride yeah. and I go, <laughs> oh, I just missed a $40 lift black ride yeah. going 10 miles because I accepted this stupid $7 Taco Bell run. I learned my mm-hmm. lesson a long time ago. Whenever you take something, there's an opportunity cost involved in whatever you're taking. So if you're taking an order for five bucks, how are you going to feel you miss out on some $30 Instacart or $40 Instacart because you're you know, still 10 miles away from this $5 Taco Bell delivery? Think about that. Uh, well, here's the other thing to think about, Damon. On that note, hey, let's end this podcast, get another one in the can, and we'll start to work on your shorts. <laughs> I always like to work on my shorts. <laughs> yeah, I'll see ya. Peace. Travis Kelsey, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs>